There's nothing that beats a firearm for a life and death self-defense situation, uh, whether it's concealed carry or even home defense. Having a firearm really kind of equalizes the playing field. And firearm ownership has really grown in the U.S. over the past few years. But the biggest segment of growth is women. And they're really looking for something to be able to defend themselves. Uh, they're really the most vulnerable and the most targeted victim out there. Today we're going to take a look at five different options. These are my top recommendations. We're going to have a couple of honorable mentions as well. But the gun industry over the past few years has been designing handguns specifically for women or those with weaker hand strength. And hopefully this will help you to really narrow down the field to be able to choose the right firearm for you. Now the first gun that we're going to show is something that I recommend not to buy is a novice female shooter. For some reason, a lot of women are attracted to the revolver, mainly because it's just simple. There's no slide to rack back. You just pull the trigger and it fires. Uh, in fact, my mother even looked at one of these when she first was trying to decide what she wanted for concealed carry. And the biggest issue is, and we're going to go ahead and check the chamber, it's empty, is pulling this double action trigger. It's heavy, it's long, and then in 38 Special, it has a lot of recoil to it. Uh, this is something that if you're going to purchase something like this, you need to take it out and train with it. Uh, I love these type revolvers, but I've been shooting them for a long time. Uh, but what happens is over and over, a lot of my friends, they'll go to a gun store, their wife will choose a 38 revolver, they'll take it out to shoot it, and they'll bring it right back. <laughs> so I wanted to get things started saying that this is one that I do not recommend. Now one of the first guns though that was actually designed specifically with women in mind is the EZ series. And not just women, again, it's weaker hand strength, it's you know recoil management and you know having a fear of recoil. So the Smith & Wesson MMP Shield uh, EZ is an excellent choice. Uh, and one of the big things about this pistol is that it's really easy to load, it's easy to rack the slide. I mean that slide is almost like butter, it is so light. Uh, and then also there are cocking ears back here that allow you to have better control. One thing I will recommend, and this is one thing that I taught my wife, is she has a shield, one of the standard shields. And she had a hard time racking it, and I told her to push the grip and hold on to the slide. So that's just a tip. But honestly, with the EZ380, or even they make a 9mm in this and a 30 Super Carry, it is a very easy slide to rack. And then one thing they do offer is this grip safety, uh, which gives you just another form of safeties. Uh, the 1911s have always had these, but a lot of people don't really care for the grip safety because they feel like it could be a failure point. But if you're gripping the gun and you're pulling the trigger, it's just a passive safety. Uh, you can get it with a manual safety or without. It's according to your comfort level. But one of the big things about the EZ in 380 is the recoil is really mild. I mean, it is a great gun to take to the range and shoot. It's very low recoil, and so it's very enjoyable. And that's one of the big pluses for the EZ series. One thing, too, with the magazine is it's only eight rounds. So, you know, you're limited in round capacity. It's a single stack mag. But right here, just like the old 22s, you can pull this down, and this makes it very easy to load. And so easy to load, easy to rack. Nice texturing on the grip, very safe pistol to carry. It does have an accessory rail, which allows you to put a light on there if you want. Uh, it does not have optics ready options, at least on the EZ. But obviously this is something to me that is just an excellent gun for the beginner or for those, again, with weaker hand strength. But following right along that line is Smith & Wesson's Equalizer. And this is really an updated version of the EZ. Uh, but it does have an extended mag capacity, so you have more rounds that you can carry. In fact, it has a 10-round flush fit, 13-round that comes out a little bit out of the bottom, and then a 15-rounder. So it gives you a lot of choices. Uh, one of the things, though, that's different with the equalizer is it doesn't have the tabs on the side. But Smith & Wesson includes one of the Maglula uh, loaders. And these are fantastic for any gun, and really it's just easy to load. You just drop them in push it down, and you can just put the round in. And so this was a great option since they were going to keep the magazine in a standard configuration. But this does give you more rounds, which is important. Two additional rounds immediately. 
Now it has a lot of the same features, but one of the things about the slide, and because this is in nine millimeter, it is a little harder to rack, but not much. It's still very easy to pull back on that slide. And it does have the same cocking ears, but it has more aggressive texturing on the slide, so you have a better grip on it. So this to me is just a great option for concealed carry or for home defense. Now it's a little bit of a larger pistol than some that we're seeing out there, but it's still a very thin, very small handgun. It is optics ready. You can get different type sights on here, night sights. You can get uh, accessories to put on the accessory rail and the texturing is actually more aggressive, which I like. Uh, and you can switch the magazine release to the other side. And obviously I have full reviews on all of these, but this is one right here that's really been updated. And until they come out with the 380 EZ, you know, you can go with the standard EZ and 380. Uh, and the recoil is going to be less, but if you want that full power of the 9mm, which will make it a little more recoil, but yet you have more round capacity, uh, this makes an excellent option. Now the retail price on the EZ 380 is $454. Market price will be less and then $599 on the equalizer, and again, at your gun store, it's gonna cost less. Now the SIG P365 is the most popular concealed carry option on the market, hands down, and they've released their 380 version. Uh, 380 version has less recoil. Uh, you still have a really nice round capacity of 10 plus one, and of course, the gun's empty. Uh, and all the guns that are gonna be showing are safety checked. Uh, the one thing about the 380 in the CZ P365, again, is that it's so uh, light on recoil. And so that's going to be nice to be able to get those second and third follow-up shots. Uh, the Racking the slide, very easy to do as well. Uh, not quite as easy as the EZ from Smith & Wesson, but definitely very doable for those, you know, even with weaker hand strength. Uh, texturing is really nice. Uh, this has a little bit of a finger groove, so you can get a more of a full grip on it. Now you'll notice that the trigger is considerably farther out, but really uh, it's not that difficult to get a hold of because this is such a small pistol. And typically the smaller the pistol, the more recoil it has according to the caliber. Like the Smith & Wesson EZ, it's going to probably have a little less muzzle flip than the SIG P365 380, but not by a whole lot. These are very soft shooting guns. The rail on the front is proprietary. And so you can't just throw on any kind of light on here. It has to be with the SIG mount. But one thing that it does come with are the SIG light night sights. And I really like that option. And it is optics ready. So you can put an optic on here if you want. And so it gives you all the features of your standard P365 just in a little bit of a lighter caliber. Now, if recoil is not a problem for you, then the standard 9mm version I highly recommend as well. Uh, because it is just an excellent gun. But the 380 is going to give you less muzzle flip. It's going to allow you to get shots on target faster. And so this is one thing that I would advise this one actually over the 9mm. Just use good self-defense ammunition. This is the smallest out of the list and the price runs $579 retail. And of course, market price is going to be less. Now a newcomer on the block is the Ruger Security 380. Uh, this is the 380 version of their 9mm and there have been some upgrades to it. Uh, this is a really fairly light handgun. Uh, it does carry the uh, 10 round magazines uh, and I believe you can get extended magazines for these as well. And in 380 ACP, but look that slide is like, <laughs> it's so easy to pull back. And so this makes it almost like there's something wrong with it, it's so easy. Uh, it does have a little bit of a large cocking ear right here, but not as much as the Smith & Wesson. Uh, sights are really nice. Um, it is not optics ready, at least this version, and they may be making an optics ready. Uh, you have your cuts here in the slide, so it makes it a really nice look to it. Uh, very aggressive texturing here. You have your Picatinny rail. Uh, and so this is very a very uh, suitable option for concealed carry, very light, and I'm a big fan. And one of the biggest pluses for the, the Security 380 is the price. Um, the retail price is $369. And of course, market price is even going to be less. So as far as a budget option, to me, this is a no-brainer, and it gives you everything the others do. And it's a Ruger. Now for a more full-size option, this is the Walther PDP-F. And the F is for females. 
Uh, one of the things about this is that it's made with a shorter distance between the back strap and the trigger. And so it makes it fairly easy for ladies to be able to get a good hand in here. Now you'll watch, I can get my second pad of my finger across this. So if you have real small hands, it's able to get a good full pad on the trigger. That is one of the biggest problems with most ladies. In fact, my daughter, you know, she shoots a lot with me. Uh, and that's one of the things that she really loved about this was she was able to get that full pad on the trigger. It just gives you better accuracy. Very t high textured grip. Uh, the slide itself is really easier to rack than some for a full-size pistol. But out of all the pistols I'm going to show, this is probably the most difficult to pull back, even though it's not that bad. Uh, but the one thing it has is these large, what they call subterrain serrations. So it gives you a really good gripping surface. And again, this is more for a home defense gun. I mean, you can still conceal carry this, but it's just going to be the largest out of the group. But it also carries 15 plus one in the magazine. And this goes with all the Walther PDP mags or even a lot of the PPQ mags. So, and that's the M2 model. Reversible mag release also has the pick rail and it is optics ready. And of course, there's a ton of sight choices out there. Uh, so really for a full size pistol, uh, this is one of the best out there for ladies or those with weaker hand strength. And to be honest with you, because I shoot so many subcompacts, I enjoy shooting this actually more than I do the PDP. Uh, and it does have the three and a half inch barrel and they do have a version with a four inch barrel, which just gives you a little bit of length. But one thing too I wanna to mention is that the trigger reach right here, even though the grip is reduced, the trigger reach itself has been reduced uh, over the PDP to make it just easier to pull back. And it has a really great trigger. Now this is in nine millimeters, so you're gonna have a little more recoil, which you do with nine over 380. Uh, but it's gonna give you more power. And with all self-defense calibers, guys, make sure that you are using jacketed hollow point or self-defense ammunition. Now the retail price on the Walther PDPF is $699. And again, market price when you go into your store is gonna be less. Next is the Beretta in model 80X Cheetah. And this is an updated version of their original model 84, uh, which was a, is an excellent pistol in itself, but this has a number of things that have been upgraded. Uh, one is the Vertec angled grip, so it's more like a 1911, a very high textured grip. So it makes it very comfortable, and yet when you fire the gun, you've got a good solid grip on the pistol. Uh, and this one, it does hold 13 plus one in the magazine. And guys, this slide, it's not that difficult. It's not super easy like the others. But because the slide is lighter weight, you're only fighting against the spring. And again, you can just push that forward. And it has front cocking serrations. Picatinny rails, any kind of light or laser. Uh, it does have optics plates that are available, so you can put an optic on here. Now the safety comes down, but when you push it all the way up, it's a decocker. And so that means you bring the safety down and then you fire the next round. Now, when you put a round in the chamber, because this is a double single action pistol, and then you rack it and you enter a round, the hammer is in the rear position. It's a very short trigger pull. Uh, but if you have the hammer in the down position, it's a fairly long reach to the trigger. And so that's one thing you wanna just test if you're looking at the Beretta ADX to make sure that you can get a hold of that trigger. It's a little bit heavy, but it's very smooth. And then subsequent shots again will just be in the rear position. Very short trigger pull. And so this is just an excellent handgun. Uh, I'm a big fan of the original Beretta 80 model, 80 series. And this definitely is a huge upgrade in a lot of places. It does have a 10 round magazine capacity available for states that aren't so free, but it's standard 13 plus one. And again, it is in 380 ACP, which gives it very light recoil. Uh, the retail price on these are $799, and again, market price will be less. But this is the most expensive option of all the different guns that we've shown. And when it comes to honorable mentions, and honestly, this fits in the list, is the Ruger LCP Max. Uh, and this holds 10 rounds of 380 ACP, and yet it's a very tiny package. Uh, this is a great concealed carry option. Uh, as far as the slide racking back, it's not very difficult. There are some cocking ears on here, just like the, the Security 380 Brother. 
so it's going to be fairly easy to bring back. Uh, the one thing about this handgun is that it's going to have a little more re felt recoil than the Security 380. Uh, because it's just a larger pistol and this is a very small tiny concealed carry option uh, but i've really enjoyed this gun i do carry this one quite a bit for deep carry because it's so tiny and it does have 10 rounds of 380 acp uh, for years i carried the lcp which had just six rounds of 380 and it was thin and tiny like this uh, but you know the recoil can be a little bit more than some people are comfortable with when you get to these really small pistols and so you want to consider that. Uh, I think as far as shootability uh, with the 380, I think the SIG outruns it just a little bit. But with a pistol this size, you need to take it out and you need to practice with it. I started out my video with the uh, SIG P238, and this is in 380 ACP. It holds six rounds of 380. So it's a very limited round capacity. Uh, but one of the things about this pistol is how easy it is to rack the slide. And so that makes it a very easy option. Unfortunately, SIG has discontinued this model, but you can still find these on the used market pretty available. Now this is more of the single action style, so the safety's here, and when you rack and enter a round in here, your hammer's gonna be in the rear position. It's gonna be safe this way. When you wanna fire, just pull your trigger and fire. Uh, with this, pulling the trigger does nothing to bring the hammer back. And that's just your standard single action. These are fairly lightweight, they're easy, and again, this was the gun that we chose for my mother uh, because she could rack the slide back. And this is before a lot of these other handguns were actually introduced. So to me, this was one that I recommended very highly for a long time, until the Smith & Wesson EZ series appeared. But this does make a very small handgun. And so this and the Springfield 911 in 380, that's also an excellent option, but it's also been discontinued. Uh, one of the problems is because it's single stack and it's very tiny, the market is just not quite what it used to be for these pistols. But then also we have the Beretta Tomcat. And one of the reasons why I even brought this one out is the slide is fairly difficult to bring back. It's in 32 ACP. Your mag release is down here. Uh, it only holds seven rounds. But one of the big pluses for the Beretta Tomcat is that it's a tip-up barrel. So I can hit this lever, brings the barrel up, load around, run directly into the chamber, close it, and then I have a full magazine here. I can just insert it. Now I have eight rounds, and I don't have to rack the slide to load it. Uh, but the one problem is, if you are going to rack the slide, you know, it's fairly stout, and it's a small slide, you know, and that is one thing if you ever have to rack it. So while this is, it, there's some great features about it. It's small. It's in 32 ACP. It's not really the optimum, but it is one of the options. And both of these are fairly low round capacity. And the Beretta Tomcat is still available. The MSRP is $649. So guys, hopefully I've narrowed the playing field. And these options are really great for those, again, female shooters, those with weak hand strength, those with little shooting experience. And guys, when it comes to that moment when you have to draw a gun, you want every advantage that you can take. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. The gun industry here lately over the past few years has been designing women. But the gun industry over the past few years has been desiring. <laughs> desiring. They've been desiring. <laughs> and this is a revised version of the original Model 84 BB or F. And guys, when it. Uh, so we're going to look at five top. I don't know if I did that already. Now the 380, this is not bad. And this is actually going to be one of the honorable. I ah, see, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to give you five top recommendations for handguns that you really need to take a look at.